Our next guest thinks the broadening of today's rally, or the rally we've been seeing uh, over the past couple of months, uh, could carry over into the new year. BMO's chief investment strategist, Young Yu Ma, joins us now with his 2024 outlook. We'll get to that outlook in just a moment. But in the in the uh, credit where credit is due department, you were soft landing before soft landing was cool. You still feel that way? We do feel that way. The pieces have come together. We talked about the that a year ago that we thought the elements were in place to have a soft landing, that the stable and healthy labor market, really unprecedented job openings provided such a buffer that we could weather the higher interest rate. So that's really come together and we think it's still playing out and we're in the latter innings of that soft landing now. What does that imply then for returns on equities and fixed income assets? We think both will be healthy in 2024. We'll probably return to more normal ranges, both for fixed income and equities. Uh, we don't expect a gangbuster year. We do think uh, that it's a year for a balanced approach to risk, but we definitely think that there's a positive backdrop for risk into 2024. So you're looking for returns in equities that would be more along the historical average of 7 to 9%, something like that, or what? Uh, looking for a bit more than that, sort of maybe mm -hmm. high single digits, but more likely low double digits. Uh, we think that's achievable given the broadening of the rally and still what should be a strong mega cap sector uh, in 2024. We think that the rally will continue to be broad based as it's been over the last couple of months here. Steve. So when you when you look at with the path of uh, the market this year and everyone talks about the performance was, uh, you know, doubled pretty much from a handful of stocks. When you have to convince people of your thesis right now, what's the major pushback that you're not going to see the mega cap deliver the, the earnings punch that they did before? Or is it that the lower tier stocks are going to outperform? You know, I think some of the pushback is uh, just a bit of uh, reluctance or incredulity that, uh, the mega caps have run so far so fast. Can they continue to do well in 2024 and hold up the markets? Uh, we don't think they're going to be have the outperformance that they had in 2023, but we still think they'll do well and, and provide some leadership in the market. So I think that's the biggest point. Uh, and I don't think investors have caught on quite as much uh, as we believe will be the case in 2024, that the rally will continue to be broad. I think investors have been burned for many, many years uh, over small caps and over value. And there's still a little bit of reluctance to jump into these areas. And I think that 2024 will be the year uh, that shows strength in these areas as well. Broad rally by size, by sector, uh, and so forth. Uh, Courtney? Now, I'm curious what your take are on bonds right now, which actually I, I see that you had noted a little bit about here. Because um, really what we've seen with investors is they're seeing really good yields on money markets. They're seeing an inverted yield curve, and they're not wanting to touch bonds, which I've done really well the last two months. So I think people aren't necessarily um, seeing that when the equity markets are also doing you know, as well, if not better. Um, I'm curious what your thoughts are looking into 2024 on the bond market. Well, we actually extended duration a couple months ago in, at a good time when 10-year yields were around 5%. We think they're actually below equilibrium now. We think as we get into the second half of 2024, uh, we're going to see the 10-year yield back above 4%. So we're not excited about extending duration here. We do think bonds will probably uh, return mid-single-digit range, sort of uh, investment-grade bonds for 2024. But we think there'll be better entry points if people are looking to extend duration uh, probably in the second half of the year as growth resumes uh, and we think earnings accelerate and the economy stabilizes. Chris, why don't you try out your thesis for 2024 on <laughs> Young You? So uh, I have a, qu a couple of questions for you. Before we get to our thesis, right, M&A has been pretty lackluster this year. Now we have lower rates. We have good valuation. We have uh, an economy that's kind of muddling along. Seems like a great time for M&A. And if we do have M&A, do we have a lot more speculation in around that, that M&A cycle? Uh, we do think M&A is going to be a big story for 2024, probably the second half more than the first half, but we do think M&A activity is going to pick up overall, and we think that's going to boost some of the sectors, uh, particularly probably biotech, uh, where we expect to see a fair amount of M&A activity, uh, both interest rates coming down the second half of the year, a lot of companies sitting on big cash piles, a lot of private equity firms sitting on cash piles as well. We think M&A is going to be a big story of the second half of the year, so uh, who does that benefit? Of course, biotech, but it also benefits some of the investment banks uh, that are heavy in M&A as well.